Super bosses are some of the coolest fights in JRPGs. Let's talk about five of the best and most memorable. JRPGs are great, aren't they? You get great stories, an expansive world to explore, and you get to experience your party getting stronger and stronger until nothing stands a chance. But what happens at that point? Everything is dying in one hit, and the game becomes a little stale, right? Well, that's where super bosses come in. Super bosses are there to test your limits and help you develop unique strategies. But what do you get from them? Usually bragging rights and an accessory or weapon that would have been of more use before you fought the hardest thing the game had to offer. Today, I'm talking about five of the coolest super bosses. There is no specific criteria on how I'm rating each one of them. More or less, they're only being based on how interesting I thought they were and how much they stuck with me after the game was over with. With that being said, before we get into it, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what your favorite super boss is. Anyways, let's get started. My name is Shinky, and I'm talking about five of the best and most memorable super bosses. The Black Rabbite from Trials of Mana. What is with the cutest bosses being the hardest to beat? It doesn't make any sense at all, really. But yes, the Black Rabbite is indeed the super boss of Trials of Mana. I swear, this has to be a spoof from that rabbit from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. In the original release of Seiken Densetsu 3, the Black Rabbit could only be encountered if you are on Duran or Angela's Roots. However, in the 2020 remake, you can encounter it in any of the characters' final dungeon. I love this encounter, because you have this cute little monster, he seems innocent, he hops around all, hey friend and then suddenly he glows with an evil darkness, and then suddenly he attacks you with evil eye beams, flaming pools of lava, and he even summons level 99 demons. It's not something you would expect from an enemy that is literally just a recolor of the first enemy in the game that you fought. But what do you get from beating this pure demon of adorable destruction? It's a good reward. Are you ready to hear what makes this all worth it? You get, you get, one experience. Yep, that's it one single point of experience. Honestly, it's not really a big deal because chances are by this point you've already gone through the post-game dungeon and you're already or almost level 99. However, you do get to see this cute little rabbi get back up after you defeat it and cutely hop away like nothing even happened. It's such a cool idea for a super boss. I enjoyed this fight. Culix from Super Mario RPG. First of all, in order to fight Culix, you must purchase the shiny stone from the per 10 store in Moleville. Take that shiny stone back to Land's End and open the black door. Once you open that door, the Culix fight will begin after a brief chat. I just love the concept of Culix. So Super Mario RPG was co-developed by Square, now known as Square Enix, which I'm sure I don't have to mention is the company that created Final Fantasy. Culix is the Final Fantasy reference of Super Mario RPG. First of all, the battle music is the boss theme from Final Fantasy IV and Culix is accompanied by four elemental crystals. He uses spells straight from Final Fantasy, like Meteor and Flare. This fight just screams Final Fantasy, and I'm all for it. I remember when I first entered this boss fight, I had actually just finished playing Final Fantasy IV right before I played Super Mario RPG, so it was surreal to see a reference like this. Honestly, the first time I fought Culix was completely on accident. I wasn't using a guide, I was just playing Super Mario RPG organically, and when I saw Culix, I was just thinking, this character doesn't look like anything else in the game. And then the music started, and I'm like, I know that baseline. Unfortunately, that baseline didn't last very long, because I instantly died, because I was by no means prepared. As up to this point, everything was super easy. Culix is hard, and is fun to fight, and when you win, not only do you get a Quartz Charm, which has damage done by enemies and increases damage that you do to enemies, you're also greeted with the classic Final Fantasy Victory theme. A great reward for defeating a great super boss. Sephiroth from Kingdom Hearts 2. Sephiroth is just fought by going to Radiant Garden, up past where you fought the Thousand Heartless battle earlier in the game, 
and then talking to Sephiroth, who's just standing there, waiting for you, staring into the distance. Yes, I'm well aware that Sephiroth from Kingdom Hearts 1 is much more difficult and has that added bonus of being voiced by InSync's Lance Bass, but honestly, I feel that Sephiroth in Kingdom Hearts 1 was just randomly inserted into the game. At least in Kingdom Hearts 2, he has a bit of a story scene to give him a little bit of relevance. I am also aware that Sephiroth is not the hardest super boss in Kingdom Hearts 2, but I find him way more fun to fight against than lingering well. Honestly, Sephiroth is kind of an easy fight once you learn his mechanics, but the fact that it requires you to react quickly and use a good portion of Sora's combat abilities really made this fight a lot of fun. And don't even get me started on the music. You know, say what you will, One Winged Angel may be the go-to and some might call it overrated. But I really love this theme and every time I hear it, I immediately get hyped up. And my brain is thinking all, oh it's go time now fool. Sephiroth has so many different types of attacks, ranging from a dash attack, to a sword combo, to Heartless Angel, to even summoning actual meteors which is a nice callback to Final Fantasy VII. I was really upset when Kingdom Hearts 3 didn't have a Sephiroth fight, and I'm hoping that when Kingdom Hearts 4 comes out, it does get a Sephiroth fight, as long as more Final Fantasy characters, because I feel like this is a standard of Kingdom Hearts. Secundus from Tales of Eternia, otherwise known in the West as Tales of Destiny 2. Secundus is fought by entering the time chamber in Chazelle's castle near the end of the game and choosing to fight him. Seriously, that's it. Now I'm aware that again, Secundus is not the hardest super boss fight in Tales of Eternia. That would go to Nerid in the post game dungeon, but I love Secundus because he's basically Deus from Tales of Fantasia, the first Tales game. Actually, I'm pretty sure his name translates directly to Second Deus. That being said, Secundus fights just like Deus does in Tales of Fantasia. He has Tetra Spell, where he uses four basic spells one after the other. Secundus Laser, where he shoots a penetrating laser beam across the entire arena, as well as Secundus Corridor, where he slams his fist down and creates an orb explosion. Deus used all of these techniques as well, so this callback was super cool. But one last thing about this fight is that the Secundus fight is the one and only time you can use the Indignation extension. I mean, it's not really an extension, but it is a special animation that is almost like a mystic art with an absolutely amazing incantation, and it instantly kills Secundus. This is a callback to Deus being weak against Indignation. Being a longtime Tales fan, I really enjoyed this, and the references like this just make the fight so memorable. You don't really get anything super substantial from beating Secundus. You get a Darius emblem, which again is a callback to Tales of Fantasia, and this Darius emblem lets you pull off Blue Earth if you are in the second or further playthrough. Fun fact, this is actually the first appearance of Blue Earth. Blue Earth also appeared in Tales of Rebirth and Tales of Graces F. Such a cool fight. I wish Tales games had cameos like this these days, but usually they're kind of bland. The Ezeria Queen, also known as Ethereal Queen from Valkyrie Profile. Valkyrie Profile was more or less pretty simple. Unless you did the A ending, which in itself is incredibly difficult to get, chances are that you didn't struggle with anything in the game. In the post game, you get to enter an optional dungeon, the Seraphic Gate, with some of the strongest enemies in the entire game. At the end of this dungeon, you get to fight the Azaria Queen. There isn't really any story, all you hear is her talking about an earlier optional boss, Gabriel Celeste, and claiming that she's quite different from him. Yeah, I was surprised that Gabriel Celeste was a man myself. Until Radiata stories. No! Almost every single attack is guaranteed to kill you. She has a normal attack that hits for 2 hits around 8,000 damage, a ring attack that does 5 hits of around 5,000 damage each, Empress Massacre, which is 29 hits of 10,000 or more damage, Extension Force, which is 1 hit of 18,000, and lastly, she uses the great magic Cosmic Spear, 
which deals around 200,000 damage to your entire party. This is an insanely tough boss fight, which almost requires the guts and auto item abilities so that you don't die. With that being said, I love this battle. From the music, to the mid-battle transformation, to just her pure evil voice acting. The whole Seraphic Gate is fun, and this fight is just a great conclusion. A really cool part about this fight is the reward changes every time you beat the boss, and it takes defeating the boss 10 times in order to get the final reward. The first item you get is the Triumblum, an amazing accessory that gives insane stats. The next 8 times you get a different book of riddles each time, and the 10th and every time afterwards you get the Angel Slayer. An unbreakable sword with 20,000 attack power, which sounds good but it has an attack trust of 1, which means only 1% of the time it actually does its full damage. Kinda useless, but kinda follows the trend of something that would have been useful before the fight. Oh well, the true reward isn't the Book of Riddles or the Angel Slayer, but the friends we made along the way. Even if they're all dead, and we sent them to Ragnarok to die. Again. Anyways, there you have it. Five of the most memorable boss fights, and ones that stuck out to me. Super bosses can be fun, and they are super satisfying to beat, even if usually at the end of the boss fight you get nothing worthwhile for your troubles and struggles. Did I name your favorite JRPG super boss? If not, why not let me know what your favorite is, or the most memorable one, in the comments below. If you enjoyed this list and want more JRPG lists and reviews, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. This has been Chinky, thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day. Super Retro Force.